the Memphis Tigers. That is the first one on the board here. And the Tigers last year went 6-6. Six and six. Uh, The bowl game got canceled for them. Their post-game win expectancy showed 6.4 and 5.6, so they were right around where they were supposed to be. Uh, probably should have beaten Temple, probably should have lost to Mississippi State, but uh, regardless, you get there to 6-6 six and six, one way or the other. Returning production this year, number 58 in the country, that's 64%. Uh, you got a bunch returning on offense, partially because you bring back uh, Seth Hennigan, the quarterback, who was a freshman last year and who really was not supposed to start. But, uh, you know, obviously... That's you, right. Grant Gunnell did not get to play. He was injured basically all year, and then he transferred out. He's now over at Arizona. Uh, the defense, however, only 57% returning. That's number 89 in the country. As far as their roster strength, number 63 overall in the country per CFB winning edge. Offense is only number 71. This is flip-flopped. Their defense roster strength is number 35 in the country. They have got some dudes on defense. Not super experienced, but... But they actually hit on some recruiting battles. They got some big time transfers in. I'm, I'm curious about this team. Um, it, let's talk about the offense here. The new offensive coordinator is Tim Cramsey. He joins after four years as the OC at Marshall. Uh, you know, again, quarterback Seth Hennigan is back. Uh, he started basically all of 2021. He was number 48 in the country in QBR. 25 touchdowns, eight interceptions. You got to figure out who steps up as the receiving threats after they lose Calvin Austin III and uh, the tight end, Dykes. Uh, the new running back, Jay Ducker, uh, new guy from Northern Illinois. That's good. He should pair well with sophomore Brandon Thomas. you got to hope that the offensive line improves a little bit. Their rushing success rate last year was number 83 in the country. Like That is just not going to get it done with Memphis. Like They have almost always been pretty good at running the football. They've had playmakers all over the place. I was just place. about to say. Yeah. That's it. They just don't have That's the play. That's one thing they've been able to do consistently through three different head coaches. They've been able to run the football. And could not and really get it done last now year. Now we're seeing a yeah, a, a trend where they just just couldn't do it at all. The defense, uh, you do have the safety Quindell Johnson. You've got defensive end Wardellis Duckworth. Um, the defensive front seven does lack proven players. Um, the new defense coordinator, Matt Barnes, spent three years at Ohio State. He was the special teams coordinator and the safeties coach. I, yeah, he's a young guy. I don't know what to expect from him. Um, but as I said, the roster strength is really good on the defense. Like, they've got talented players. There's just not a lot of experience. That's what I'm curious about. Uh, my keys to the season here, they started 3-0 and last year, but, uh, but they lost six of the last eight down the stretch. They, uh, they play like this is what scares me about this is Memphis has has been really good for what a decade now at this point, and yes. what last season turned into is what the beginning of a program downturn looks like, right? Yes. Like if they can if they can reel out of it and get back to you know eight and four you know even seven and five just look like a competitive football team then maybe they can avoid that. But this don't look like the same kind of offense that Memphis is used to. But maybe that's okay. Like, if you swap over and be a really good defensive team, then all right. But ah, I, well, Okay. Well, I guess we see this a little different. I like the hire from the Marshall guy. Like, oh, I, yeah. I like what Marshall has done over the past. I think that's a big improvement of what they've had. So I think offensively they're going to be substantial. Well, hey, you can't be a lot worse than they were. I just think the offense is going to be a lot better if the defense is better. I think this team can be good. Oh, I think, not, not I think it can, too. I, they can't win the conference, but, like, like I, I think they can be 7-5. and five. I have them 6-6, six and six, but I really want to make them 7-5 and five and just don't have the stones. But I, I think they can. I, I've got them at 7-5, and five, so you've got them at 6-6. Six and six. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah. So I, the way you were talking made it seem like, there's just no way. I'm like, I, I don't know, man. I think this team's going to be good. I think they're going to be fine. Yeah, I think I think they'll be okay, but I will tell you this. Like, they're not the top it, tier of the top three. All yeah. right. Those three are separated from everybody else by a mile. Oh, 100%. But this is this is certainly the kind of team that could also uh, lose at some of these games that we expect them to win and then see, win some. See, the only reason, yeah. The only reason I got them 6-6 six and six is because this team right here could easily go into – 
the Naval Academy and lay a big old egg because that's what they do every time they go to Annapolis. Oh, it's, I've got them losing the Navy. Like at my losses yeah. here, I've got uh, Mississippi yeah. State, Navy, uh, Tulane, and let's see, SMU. Oh, and Houston. Uh, but I've got them beating UCF. I've got them beating Tulsa. Uh, like I've got them winning uh, see, at East I Carolina. I, I don't. I don't. I don't have them beating UCF. Like that's just not happening. It's, I've, I've got that because it's the week after a bye week. Uh, they tend to play UCF pretty tough anyway. I, you know, I, but again, anything could happen with this team. Uh, anything could happen. That's right. Anything could happen. My, I got my, them six and six. My keys could be seven and five. Oh yeah, they could be seven and five. They could, I mean, they could go five and seven if they do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously that definitely not good. Uh, I've got on here. Uh, you got to hope that Hennigan can develop consistency. And you need the trenches to show up on both sides of the ball uh, because offensive line and defensive line certainly need to improve after last year. They lost some big-time dudes to transfer uh, out of there. They need playmakers to emerge on offense. Defense has talent and speed, but not much experience. Uh, it says toss on to it the fact that the new D.C. Barnes has never been a defense coordinator, and who really knows what to expect from this defense. I did put on here, if Silverfield has another down year, do not be surprised if Memphis pulls the, fl- uh, the plug on this experiment. You yep. you kind of agree with that? Yep. No, I don't kind of agree with it. Uh, I think if he's five and seven or worse, uh, he's gone. I think I think you're right. I think you're right. They are really positioning themselves uh, to join the Big Twelve. And if your football team is headed in a downward spiral, that ain't gonna work. So, yeah, you better you better get it done this year. This will make or break year for well, uh, for Ryan Silverfield. That I, will. I think he was a bad hire to begin with, though. So. I I think it's always a bad idea There's, when you hire a coach because the players want him. Yep, because those players are going to leave. Uh, most of them are gone. Most of them are already gone. Yeah, all the ones that wanted him aren't there anymore. Congratulations, you got, right. you got what you wanted. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.